How often do you set aside time to be in God's presence? Do you know the sweetness of being renewed in His presence? Renewal is on the menu for today's lunch. Oh my Lord, sing Here we are at City Gate Church, Eford, for this year's Renewal Conference 2018, a gathering that brings together worshippers from different backgrounds, ages and denominations to praise God. Renewal has been a bit of a success story for the past decade. We caught up with some people in the foyer on their expectations for this year. I'm here because um, Renewal Conference is a very powerful tool that I find where people can come and renew and refresh and revive. And especially if you're in ministry like we are a lot, where you're giving all the time, it's good to go somewhere where you can plug in and recharge, refresh, so then you can take whatever you learnt or experienced to, um, to do what you do. This year, I decided to come with my team to come worship we together. Learn. We can learn as well because we, we're always worship in church. We're there two, four, seven. So today, take some time off. It's like our training day. It's nice to like step out of the box and see how others do things. So that's what we want to take away and take it back to our church as well. I find it's the place where you come and you can you meet with other Christians and you find out how to do things differently and better because we're used to being in our own local churches and we do things a certain way, but it's nice to get the perspective of other people and get new ideas. I am here for the soaking atmosphere that renewal always brings. It is just like a meeting of people who just are crazy for God, mm. a little bit beyond just a church attendance. It's people that know they're called to, to be the front line of praise and worship. And so it's almost like a gathering of the champions. And when, we get, and when we get together, <laughs> it's just, it, it changes my life each year. It's like a refreshing, it's like a drink of water. You get used to serving people and then when you come to renewal, you can sit back and just relax. relax. Just let just enjoy the atmosphere, be ministered to, because not many people know what we go through as worship leaders. I'm expecting to, to grow in my Christian faith. I'm, I'm expecting to, to, to meet with God on a daily basis from now on. I'm expecting to uh, just, just see it for what it really is, rather than the lies that the enemy tries to tell us, you know? For me, it's just a time to refuel and recharge, because we just keep going, we keep working, yeah. we keep yeah. working. And yeah. I, think, uh, um, I, I think at times it gets to a place where we just put up appearances. I just wanted a place where I can just pause, relax, hear what God's saying, worship, not maybe, you know, you kind of pause your ordinary life and just pause it for the day and come somewhere else, have a bit of a, you know, a soak. That's kind of my expectation, hear what God's saying. For me, coming is very much about me time, uh, me and him, so that's really what I like. Most importantly, it's just a chance to just get a deeper relationship with God and just to be with God's people and experience his, his amazing awesomeness. Um, in this big arena, so yeah, I'm expecting great things. Renewal 18, wow, I, I couldn't explain it, you'd have to be here. It's designed to enhance a worship team's experiences and the way they can do things and the way they share with people and the way they, uh, the way they write songs and the way they soak in the spirit. But, but... Renew. Yeah. I never actually, I've seen flyers for a number of years mm -hmm. and then this year I finally made it. So um, great to kind of connect with Sarah Jane mm -hmm. and the team here. It's just been phenomenal to kind of get that mm -hmm. infilling. So really good. I heard that last year it was really good. So I thought if I come this year, it, it would be as well good. 
and it's been amazing. I've had lots of spiritual encounters and it's all, all been good. This experience for me is like the shower. So it's very kind of still. One thing I like about showering is to stand in and let the water do the work and that's kind of how it feels for me in there. And then out of that is very often how I express. I could actually go home now. <laughs> I've been rejuvenated. Well, today we've got with us the convener of Renewal, an international worship leader, music pastor, singer-songwriter, and recording artist, Nor Robinson. Wow, that's a lot of title. <laughs> that's a lot of title. <laughs> but it's good, you know? Praise God. So here we are, 2018, and the 10th anniversary of Renewal. Why are we doing this? Wow, well, I mean, 10 years ago, um, um, I believe that God spoke to my heart about something that um, he was showing me. I saw it and I asked the questions and I think that the answer came back, so why don't you do something about it? And that was in the area of worship and unity and people coming together. And, um, and I started um, like 10 years ago. And since then we've, we've done 20 odd events Amen. up and down the whole nation. Um, I really do believe it was a God call because um, the event, uh, the events that happen, we don't call them events, we call them encounters. Amen. And um, we've seen just thousands of people come to it over the years. So um, I'm really excited to, to say, well, 10 years, we've done 10 years and we celebrate that and all that God's done in the renewal, in the lives of people who have come and people who have been through it. So we're, we're just totally still excited about what God is doing. I mean, praise God. So as a minister, do you think there's anything special on God's agenda for 2018? Yeah, I do. I do feel that uh, we've come into a significant time in human history, but also a significant time in church history. And why do I use the word church? Because I actually believe that the church is the agent of heaven in the earth. You know, God built the church, Jesus built the church, established the church. And there's a reason why the church exists in all the nations of the earth, the reason why the body of believers coming together. And the world is, is, is being primed for, I believe, uh, a revival. And I use the word revival loosely and significantly at the same time because um, um, God, the church is made up of people and people who are revived. And I believe that every generation is called to establish and do something in that generation that really pulls, you know, the prayer that we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And I feel that part of the mandate is unity of the believers and also for revival, a revival in salvation, in, in, in people position themselves to actually take over uh, take over in the spheres of influence to be all that God's called them to be. And alongside that is the worship, because worship is one of the vehicles that connect us to God. Um, it's in worship we receive revelation, it's communion that we receive the things of God that we use to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. 2018 is a year of new beginnings for us, a year of fulfillment of God's purposes and for new things to begin. So. That's where we are, beginning a new thing. Amen. Talking about revival, you recently said in a media report that there can't be revival without unity and the church needs to fight for unity. How can we get this big you across denominations and cultures? Well, I think that one of the components of the church is, is, is unity because Jesus is, one of Jesus' last statement was that the world will know who you are because of the love that you have for each other. So it means that there is this place of intention that we often miss, because if you're in a massive big church or you're in a small church, it's quite easy to be caught up in, and I call it the bubble, not in a negative way, the most amazing bubbles that people exist in, or should I say spheres that they exist in. So each church has a mission, each church has a mandate, and they carry out that mandate. But one of the mandates of the Bride of Christ is that we would be one. Amen. 
happen. Because Jesus said that, the world will know. I actually believe it's this place that revival will come to. In Psalms, it talks about the unity of the brethren brings a commanded blessing. It's this commanded blessing that comes upon the church, the favor that comes up on the bride of Christ, that its members begin to influence every sphere of society. So I really believe that unity is intentionally sought because we as people, uh, you know, there's a saying that says, birds of a feather flock together. So here's me talking to you, you're from Nigeria. Um, my family heritage is Caribbean, although I was born in the UK. People listening are from different places. And you find people stick together because of their heritage, because of their culture, um, colour, styles of music, all these different things that, 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 that make up your cultural DNA. But here we have a super culture that says unity and the world will know who you are because of the love we have for each other. Now, love is something that I believe is intentional. Uh, when people marry, there's a level of maturity in marriage or relationship that happens where you're intentional about your marriage because the feeling doesn't always exist there. Love is love, but it changes. So I believe that where we are in the body of Christ with so many churches, especially in the city of London and the United Kingdom, there's a place for us to come together to pray. And the most profound thing is that we pray differently, but we're praying the same subject, that kingdom come. What's even more important, we're singing the same songs. So it means that we have the ability to come together and worship together. What does God do? He shows up with a commanded blessing. So. That's the thing, that's the passion of my heart, that unity, engaging in intimacy with God produces fruit that the world can't, can't doubt. Obviously, there are times when everyone cannot come together. Totally. The practicalities around that are, 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 are quite difficult at times because every individual church has its own agenda, its own dates, its own times, it has its own mandate. But there must be a moment where, where this shared expression, worship is not just about singing together and just worshiping together. Unity is not just about that. But actually the fact that I acknowledge who you are and what you bring to the table. In actual fact, we have this amazing thing with unity and that we intentionally, so I eat what you eat and you eat what I eat. Try what I eat and you eat what I eat. And there's something of us understanding a little bit about who we are because we all eat food but we eat different levels of food some people like it very hot some people don't like it as hot but that doesn't mean that we can't eat together it just means that we have to intentionally prepare so if I come to your home and you know I don't like pepper you'll prepare something for me without pepper right and if I know you like pepper I prepare something with pepper so what happens is that you're able to enjoy so I, I believe that the intentionality of forming relationships throughout our churches with people that don't worship, expression is different. Worship the same God is, I think it's very important that we, we, we acknowledge those places. And it's that place of acknowledgement that I say is a very powerful altar. Um, there's a specific to it, you know, Moses goes, God, we've gathered, how do we gather the tribes? All the tribes were different. And he said, blow a trumpet and they'll come together. And they came together around the tabernacle, which was worship. So I'm just trying to intentionally make that happen with the renewal. Okay, and over 10 years now, what impact have we seen? Because we intentionally reach out to all these cultures and we say, come and worship with us. In that moment, something happens and they're impacted forever because most of them do not have the opportunity to reach out and worship together with their neighbors uh, because we really believe in coming together. So I'm just a component trying to bring other components together. Um, and those that will listen and come along, we, we certainly do continue to explore all that God is doing in this generation. I mean, grace to that. Amen. Thank you. I tell you what, we'd love to leave our audience with a test of the renewal experience. Which of your songs can we play today? Do you know, the song that I really believe sums up uh, much of our heart over the last 10 years is a song called Rain. Rain on me. Just singing those words over your life in faith. We believe that there's a release of heaven. You know, the Bible says that in the last days I pour out my spirit on all flesh. My sons and daughters will prophesy. 
So we believe that we're in that season where God is, is, is breathing, he's pouring out his rain, and we are prophesying. Amen. So we're worshippers who happen to be. Worshippers happen to be broadcasters, worship happens to be musicians, worshippers happen to be cameramen, worshippers who happen to be doctors, lawyers, worshippers happen to be students. When worship defines us, we become eligible for the prophetic to operate in our lives. So we're most certainly excited. So listen to this song, Rain Amen. on Me. Amen. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. My pleasure. And I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience at Renewal. Wow, World. thank you. Hopefully you'll come again. <laughs> we do. And thank you for your fellowship today. Next week, we'll be discussing practical tips on how we can communicate our faith. But right now, here's another opportunity to worship in your own.